Once upon a time in your life, you might have heard of fasting. It's often done for religious or spiritual reasons, and also has been scientifically proven to have a significant positive effect on human health. Intermittent fasting implies restricting food intake over periods, and it's been around for thousands of years. Even from a neuroscience perspective, caloric restriction and intermittent fasting have very significant positive effects on both the brain and your body. But can intermittent fasting improve your brain function? Can, can fasting improve the functionality of our brain and, and change the way we think and comprehend things? Well, if you're curious about that, then you're on the right place, which you knew because you clicked on the video. Let's keep on watching to learn some more. Hey everybody, once again, welcome back to our channel. If you're new to the channel, then make sure you subscribe to the channel and press the bell icon to never miss another update from our channel. Yeah, again, let's get started. First of all, you might be a little blurred as to what intermittent fasting is. Intermittent fasting is an eating strategy. It's more like a diet plan that toggles between eating and not eating on a regular schedule. It's, it's more like an eating pattern that cycles periodically between fasting and eating. And presently, it's one of the world's hottest health and fitness trends. A lot of people have been following it, and it seems to be enhancing their health, helping them lose weight, and, for lack of better terms, healthify their life. A lot of studies lay out that it can have significant effects on your body and your brain, and indeed will help you live longer. So far, so good, right? Intermittent fasting doesn't specify which foods one can eat, but rather just specifies when one should eat them. Therefore, in that respect, it's not like a, a diet, quote-unquote, in the conventional sense, but more directly, it's an eating pattern. In ancient times, Nimrods and Stone Age people didn't have supermarkets or refrigerators or food available all the time, obviously. Therefore, more frequently, people didn't have anything to eat. So fasting from time to time is way more natural than eating for three to four times every single day. <laughs> But this raises the question, are there other types of fasting as well? Yeah, actually, you got that right. There's a lot of different types of fasting extending from alternate fasting, which is intermittent fasting approach where the person basically fasts on one day and also eats whatever they want the following day. And they also have intermittent fasting, which we've formally interpreted and hopefully you're pretty clear about that. Uh, to the keto diet, which is a high fat, medium protein, genuinely low carbohydrate diet. And when I say low carbohydrate, I mean low. Oh, and there's also a vegan diet, which I'm sure you've heard of, which is substantially taken up for ethical reasons. But when it's done in the right manner, it can also be an effective route to weight loss. Unless you're eating Oreos, which are vegan. But you not only have the chance to lose weight with a vegan diet, it can also help you maintain said lower weight. Oh, yeah, and small thing, if you want to subscribe to the channel right now, that'd be awesome. And press the bell icon. All right, moving on. So now comes another question. How is intermittent fasting different from just starving? It's honestly one of the most asked things when it comes to intermittent fasting. People often confuse intermittent fasting with starvation, which is pretty funny, right? And, but we're not kidding. I mean, if you Google it yourself, you'll see the exact same thing. People have been mingling intermittent fasting with starvation for as long as intermittent fasting has been a thing. Intermittent fasting is defined as eating food within a hand-picked time frame. While starvation involves withholding food fully or, or eating only countable calories over an extended period. And oftentimes, starvation is involuntary. To slenderize yourself, your body needs to be at a calorie deficit, which includes expanding further calories through exercise and or consuming smaller calories from food. Still, starvation causes a larger calorie deficit, which doesn't always mean that you'll lose weight and keep it off, which is true. Although you will see a significant weight loss in the morning, you'll find it very difficult to sustain this weight loss in the future. And indeed, even more problematic, if you do starve yourself, your body's survival mechanisms may acclimate to that lower calorie intake, which would basically make your body burn less of them. And obviously, burning more is better when it comes to weight loss. So starvation may lead to your body working a lot less effectively, slowing your metabolism, irregulating your menstrual cycle, affecting your skin and your bone health. The list goes on and on. Whereas intermittent fasting allows you to lose weight healthily and sustainably. Intermittent fasting can help you in losing around one to two pounds per week and involves eating a nutritional diet and exercising regularly to reach that small calorie deficit. Are there different kinds of intermittent fasting as well? People, a lot, or at least a lot of people, choose salutary plans like intermittent fasting and the keto diet, which are currently two of the hottest health trends. 
Numerous health-conscious people use these styles to drop weight and control certain health conditions. Popular techniques of intermittent fasting are 5 and 2 and 16 and 8. The 5 and 2 diet, known as the fast diet, is presently the most popular intermittent fasting diet. Now, it's called the 5 and 2 because 5 days of the week are perfectly normal eating days, and the other two limit calories to 500 per day. It, that's it. That's, that's the entire plan. It's that simple. Whereas the 16 and 8 intermittent fasting system involves limiting your input of foods and calorie-containing potables to a set window of 8 hours per day. You withhold yourself from food for the remaining 16 hours, though you're uh, still allowed to drink coffee and water and other no-calorie things. Proponents claim that it's a straightforward, accessible, and sustainable way to slim down and to help your overall health. But what are the genuine benefits, like the sciency benefits of intermittent fasting? Well, there are several, so let's just explain a few of them, right? When you don't eat for a while, several effects befall your body, apart from just losing weight or burning fat. For instance, your body changes your hormone situation to make stored body fat more accessible, and then initiates important cellular form processes. Blood levels of insulin drop significantly, which facilitates fat burning, and then the blood levels of human growth hormone might accelerate dramatically. Advanced levels of this hormone, grease, fat burning, and muscle gain have other multiple benefits. The body induces important cellular form processes, similar to removing waste from cells. If you want to look more up, it's called cell autophagy. Numerous are the benefits of intermittent fasting, and, and all of these are related to these changes in hormones and the functions of your cells and gene expression. And if I've already got you on board with intermittent fasting, just hold on to your trousers, because it also helps maintain your brain health. In addition to decelerating the aging process, metabolic switching rises neuroplasticity in the brain which helps optimize the brain function and increase the brain's resistance to injury and illness. Intermittent fasting also triggers a process called, oh wait, I already said it, autophagy, which works to shield off Alzheimer's disease and Parkinson's disease. It's pretty cool, right? So being the psychic that I am, the next question that comes to your mind is, what are the rules of intermittent fasting? There are certainly no bounded rules since it's a dietary practice, not quite a diet in the conventional sense. There are still several ways to do intermittent fasting though, like I've said. All of them split the day or the week into eating and fasting periods. There are various methods in which one can follow like the 16-8 and the 5-2, like I already said. Eat, stop, eat method, all that good stuff. Now all of these methods, in short, ask you to reduce your calorie intake. That's a large part of the advantage of it. With a smaller window of time in which to eat, you end up eating less. So all of these methods should cause weight loss as long as you don't compensate by, like, just cramming your face with all of your daily calories in eight hours. <laughs> so a lot of people find the 16-8 method to be the simplest, most sustainable, and by far the easiest to stick to. So therefore, it's the most popular. And uh, again, you might follow any other method. It's, it's totally up to you and your body, too, of course. You might choose to fast for two different days of the week, consuming 500 to 700 calories on those days. Eat normal meals on the other five days, which would be the five to two. Oh, and also, if you really wanted to step up the five to two, you can also just completely fast on your two off days. Eat whatever you want on the other five days and just fast for two days a week. Super effective. Or you can limit eating every day to a six to eight hour period, like I've been saying. Just really drilling it in. Not redundantly at all. For example, eat one meal at noon and, and the second meal by 8 p.m. Fast forward until the next day at noon, which is a 16 hour fast. Again, it is up to you. It doesn't really matter what I think, right? It's up to you who chooses which method will be best for you and which one suits your body the best. The bottom line is, intermittent fasting is extremely beneficial, although people might say that the affirmation statement might be debatable. Intermittent fasting is an incredibly popular weight loss method. Again, some people are haters on it, but its benefits extend way beyond all that hate. It can help you live longer and be an all-around healthier person too according to studies involving animals and humans anyways. So, if you're interested in starting intermittent fasting, you might consider speaking with, you know, your nutritionist or a doctor or somebody who really knows what they're talking about and ask them about which method to follow would perfectly fit your dietary needs and they can help you determine what's actually safe for you. So, you might have gotten an idea of how intermittent fasting is good for you and your health and your brain. So if you like this video, make sure to subscribe to our channel and press that little bell icon so you don't miss out on updates. And that's all I got for you, so I'll be saying goodbye now. Uh, good goodbye.